Hey everyone, welcome to week 80. Today is day four, today is Thursday. This is our final day of our against week. So let's see if we finish strong. Next week, new theme, and it's gonna be live. So see you there. Okay, let's get started. This is day four. This is gonna be our final day of our against week. And as is the case with many weeks, I could not foresee what was gonna happen during the week. I always have an idea of what I think is supposed to happen at the beginning of the week. And it's always surprising to see how the week develops and how the paintings actually start conditioning how I view the week. Because before I start to conceive the paintings, before I start to try and depict the images that I want to solve through painting, I realize that it's all a very nice idea. But a wonderful idea without execution is not a painting. If you have decided to say things through paint, then when you use paint, when you try to forge a relationship with this medium as you're trying to solve this image, unexpected things happen. And that has certainly been the case with this week. I thought it was going to be far easier to tell myself that I was going to fight against my instincts. I thought that I could recognize those instincts easily. You know, in my mind, I have an idea of who I am as a painter. I recognize the identity of my own painting. So I thought, okay, if I am aware of who I am as a painter, then it's going to be super easy to try and force myself to go the other way, to fight against those things that I hold true. And it's not that simple. I said it yesterday. It's not that simple. It was quote unquote easier on Monday, although I had to fight with that image quite a bit to try to make sense of it, even though it doesn't make sense. So it's really fascinating what happens when you try to view the painting from the shore where all your understanding has been constructed and just a tiny little variable that offsets everything makes all of your experiences kind of useless because now you're in panic mode and you're trying to assess what is going on in the painting and you're trying to make a painting. You're trying to solve an image as best as you can and that's exhilarating to be honest. You have no idea where this image is taking you. You have no clue if it's gonna work or not, but you're there along for the ride and that's super cool. Honestly, that's like super, super exciting for me. On Tuesday, it was a completely different thing. I thought I could exercise my power over the sense of control that I have of my painting and it's not, it's an illusion of control because the depths in which my subconscious controls a painting are absurd. I mean, I thought that I could convince myself that I was doing something that would put my painting in harm's way. And no, subconsciously, my ability was in super defensive mode and it was trying to ameliorate those variables that could be deemed as menacing. And it was weird to think that I was going to make my life you know, a living hell while I was breaking up this color and while I was pushing those hues. And honestly, it just made for a very pleasant experience, which is not what we're looking for during this week. And yesterday, I guess I was trying to prove myself something and it had to do with form because I think that if there's one thing, one aspect of painting that I enjoy thoroughly has to be the depiction of form through paint. The way we can convey three-dimensionality through paint has to be one of the most attractive things in the world for me. And one of the things where I feel most at home is pushing form, is pushing the attributes of form. And among the things that I usually do is distort and exaggerate based on whatever aspect is moving me. I guess I wanted to have some time with that idea yesterday and see if there are unexplored corners where I would feel uncomfortable. And of course, I'm not saying that yesterday's painting explored every single region of what it means to push form. Of course not, of course not. But I think that throughout my career, I've certainly tried a ton of things, a ton of things regarding the way we can express through form. And with yesterday's painting, focusing on how gesture can condition the way form is presented, I think that I proved to myself, again, I'm not trying to prove anything with a painting. I'm just using a painting to see how much I understand this aspect of my own painting. But I think I showed myself that form is never gonna be anything but enjoyable for me. This is certainly not a place where I'm gonna say, oh, I'm out of my element, this is very threatening, 
I don't feel comfortable. I don't know what to do with this. No, the thought of pushing and stretching form to limits that I can't even conceive is just incredibly exciting. I mean, if I need fuel for the rest of my life to feed my need for painting, it has to be that. The exploration of form is enough. It's more than enough. If you told me that the next 40 years of my life, I'm going to spend pushing form, oh my God, pig in mud. You know, that is my life. I'm going to die a very, very happy man. If I could spend the rest of my life just understanding how to exaggerate the depiction of form in infinite ways. So yesterday's painting, I was trying to fight against something, but that something was not fighting back. It was not pushing back because there's no reason for it to push back. What I found was just my sensibility being incredibly welcoming to whatever I can throw its way. Yesterday, I learned that if I'm going to fight against something, it's not going to be form. It really isn't. There's not going to be any fighting going on. Now, I was growing frustrated because I was telling myself, come on, the idea of this week was to suffer, <laughs> you know, was to go against your instinct just to try to recognize where that instinct lies and how relevant those things that you believe are to the very makeup of your painting. And because it was not happening, I was pretty pissed at myself because I know deep down that painting can be enormously frustrating. And the only thing I wanted to do throughout this week was just to encounter that frustration head on, to be aware that that's what was going to happen during the week. So for today, I told myself, I'm going to do something that, come to think of it, I don't think I've ever done. And I don't think I've ever done it just because I think it's very technique-y and it can lend itself to be super gimmicky. And the thing that I'm doing today, and you guys have probably noticed, is that I'm not going to use a brush and I'm going to try to use my palette knives throughout the painting. Now, I have a bigger knife that is terrible. It's actually super soft and wobbly, so... I really don't like it. I actually use it just to scrape my palette. And I have a smaller knife, which is the one that I usually use in tandem with my brushes. And I've really grown to love my palette knife. But the thing is, I don't really use a palette knife as a tool that adds or models paint. I don't. If you guys are fans of the channel, you've noticed that what I usually do with my palette knife is that I move paint around just so that I can soften edges. You know, I really love chaotic edges. I love a tool that can give me a sense of control. You know, with a very sharp knife, I can do the sharpest of edges. But also if I'm just like scraping or smushing paint around with a knife, it creates really wonderful, grungy, organic edges. And I love that. There is a unexpected sense of what happens whenever I start scraping and moving paint around with my knife, I've really grown to love how those edges and the way paint is deposited with the knife relate to the brushwork that I do. So it's a very nice fluctuating pulse where I'm controlling my edge work, I'm controlling my strokes, I'm shaping my strokes, and then I draw the knife and it's this beautiful controlled chaos that I really, really love. So I've come to adore my small palette knife because it works incredibly well with my brush strokes. I've been able to understand the dynamics of these two separate tools within my own painting practice, and I think I'm taking a ton of advantage with what they can provide me. So Super, super happy with the palette knife as a tool, but again, a tool that can be partnered with my brushes. That to me is essential. For today, I told myself, you're going to use your knives. There's no way out of this. Convince yourself that you can solve a complex painting with knife work. Part of my brain was like, okay, I think I can do planar stuff. A knife lends itself supernaturally to depict facets of form. It's just a perfect tool for doing sharp planes. In my mind, I was like, okay, if I have to paint like a little cube, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. But if a form becomes a little more complex, I really start to panic and I start to interiorize the limits of these tools. And I think that that's what happened today. But I tried to circumvent all those issues by thinking of my subject matter. So Fer has a hairbrush that she uses that I've always wanted to paint. You know, I've always seen this brush and I've always been enamored by the tiny little forms in this brush. And I've always told myself, I want to paint this brush. You know, I really, really want to paint this brush. But when I see it lying around because Fer just leaves it wherever, and when I try to see myself painting this thing, I am always horrified because I see a ton of information. 
a ton of information. Whenever I remind myself, oh, I should paint this brush because it's a great subject matter, I always stop myself immediately after I really observe it and I realize this is super, super tough to paint. You know, in my brain, I haven't figured out a way where I could try to simplify this subject matter. So I told myself, you know what? What better thing to paint when you have no sense of control over the tools of your painting than this subject matter that you've been super scared of painting for the longest time? I know it doesn't make sense. That would give anyone a horrible anxiety attack. And trust me, when I thought that this was a good idea, my brain was also saying, what are you doing? Don't be an idiot. So to try to make things a little bit easier, I told myself, use that four color palette that is incredible. Titanium white, yellow ochre, cad red, ivory black. That's all you need to do this painting. If the color variables are not really threatening or not something that you know is gonna give you trouble, you can concentrate solely on form, on structure, on the way you're going to lay down paint. It's all about construction. Don't think about color. And I said, okay, maybe if my color choices are so controlled through the Zorn color palette, then I can kind of deal with the complexity of my subject matter. And I'll try to deal with seeing myself use this palette knife as my only tool. I can say that the palette knife got me far. I mean, it didn't get me far enough, but it got me far. I started realizing that, yeah, if I'm super, super careful, like if I was incredibly careful, if I used this knife with surgeon-like precision, I could have probably executed this whole painting with a knife. But remember, I'm a pig in mud. I'm not about being precise with my tools. That is not the painter that I am. So there was a moment in my painting where I was trying to paint the bristles, those pins of the hairbrush. It was then that I realized, okay, maybe this tool in my hands, again, in my hands, is not suited to paint this brush. I want to underline the fact that I'm saying in my hands. I am sure that there's people out there that are magicians with a palette knife and they can make knives do whatever they want. But in my case, I'm heavy handed. I just, you know, know how to lay down paint and scrape it off. And that's about it. So trying to do these individual bristles with these little rounded points in the end was just too much for me. So I told myself, you know what? You've earned it. You can cheat. And what I did was um, I used the tip of the brush. I used the uh, tip of the handle of the brush. I actually sharpened it a little bit with a knife so I could get somewhat of a point. And I told myself, you could do the rounded tips at the end of the bristles with this. It is still something of a primitive tool. You know, there's nothing elegant. There's nothing sophisticated about using the tip of the handle of your brush to try to do these little marks because it's never going to come out quite right. But when I realized that it was not going to lend itself to be controlled, I liked it. I would have been very mad at myself if I went for a tool that I sensed I could control very well because that would have proven the use of the palette knife pointless. Even though I cheated, and it is cheating, I was pretty much just using a stick. And I think that if I am going to cheat, a stick shouldn't be off limits. So I'm very happy with today's experience, to be honest with you guys, because painting was tough. I know that changing tools shouldn't make painting so hard, but it was really hard for me. I mean, I really, really missed my brushes. And I have very cheap brushes. You guys have seen me paint. I'm not hiding anything from you guys. I usually have a couple of rosemary brushes. I have a couple of Da Vinci bristle brushes. But the rest of the brushes that I normally use are just very cheap flat synthetics. And I'm very, very comfortable using those. And it was incredible how much I missed them. My brain, unfortunately, every time I was at an impasse, wanted to go for those brushes. And I was telling myself, if I only had a brush, I could make a kick-ass painting, which is not a good mentality to have because, you know, you should convince yourself that you are going to use a set of tools that you're not accustomed to using. And you shouldn't be longing for the use of your brushes. You should just be recognizing the things that those tools that you've decided to use can provide to you. So whenever my brain was telling me, oh my God, we're missing brushes so much, I tried to shut my brain down and tell myself, these are the tools that we are using for today. There's no point in trying to say how lovely brushes are because we're not gonna use them today. We're not. So try to make the best of what you have. And it was really nice because 
I saw myself reaching a point where I could see alternatives. And that provided me with a ton of hope and a ton of energy. Yes, for this painting, but also for the future. Because you guys have heard me say how maybe urban landscapes are something that I'm not super comfortable with. Or, for example, completely arbitrary subject matter like bicycles. They absolutely horrify me. And this hairbrush was also something that was so simple, but at the same time so absurdly complex that I told myself, it is really nice when you realize that you have no control over what you're doing, that there's no way you can finesse this painting. You're going to have to brute force your way through the resolution of this painting. And I really like that. Again, the brute forcing part, probably has to do with me and my sensibility as a painter. I am sure that there are far more capable painters that can use a palette knife and finesse their way with this tool to levels that I can't really visualize or comprehend. But in my hands, it might as well be like a butcher knife. You know, <laughs> this is not something that I can convey sensitivity with. So in many ways, it was really calming. It was very refreshing to accept those things, to say, I have no control over this. And it almost suits perfectly the fact that I'm going to paint something that horrifies me because it makes it less frightening because I almost expected myself not to be able to solve it. And what I recognized was that I could start to express how I feel about this brush with this knife, which is very different from trying to simply paint this hairbrush. And that provided me with a level of balance that I did not expect to find when using a tool that I'm unfamiliar with. I've always seen, for example, Dubuffet's drawings, and I think you guys have heard me speak about Dubuffet before. He is somebody that I would love, I would love to be able to access within my own work, but I don't know how. And I think today the pairing of this hairbrush and the palette knife showed me something. It just cracked open a door that can maybe lead me organically to that path where I can access the du buffet in me. And that's incredibly, incredibly exciting. That's going to be it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, not the week that we were expecting, but maybe the week that we needed. That can also be super cool. As we always say in our final day, Danny, Samu, Fer, and myself, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be your company, even if it's for 15, 20 minutes a day. And all we ask is that next week you join us. We're going to be live. We're going to be painting live. We're going to be sharing references. So if you guys want to paint along, you could do that. If you guys want to ask questions, you could do that. We are going to do one of our live weeks, which are super cool. I think we enjoy those tremendously. So hopefully you guys can join us next week. We love you guys. See you there. Bye.